Hey everyone, this video is going to cover one of the most important topics for living in a foreign country, money. And it should be important. A misunderstanding about how money is used in a different country can lead to moments of inconvenience, embarrassment, and even overcharging. I will cover how we use cash and credit cards here, the ratio between the Barbados dollar and the US dollar, and three key tips I recommend for future visitors to Barbados. So first, the basics. Barbados mints and produces their own coins and bills. Coins are in 5 cent, 10 cent, 25 cent, and $1 increments. The $1 coin is heavily used here, unlike the failed Sagajawea coin the US tried to implement several years ago. Paper bills are in increments of $2, $5, 10, 20, 50, and 100. There may be a higher value bill in existence, but it's not used regularly and I've never seen it. But I love that the bills are all different colors. It makes it really easy to tell what you're handing to the cashier. Cash is used far more often here in Barbados than in the US, but I'll be honest, I'm only saying this from what I've observed in my limited interactions at grocery stores and other places. Credit cards are accepted at most businesses, but it's not uncommon for small businesses, of which there are many, to accept cash only or accept only a certain type of credit card. Taxis and buses, I should say, only accept cash. That's important to note. When I lived in the US, I rarely carried more than 10 to $20 in my wallet, but here, I try to keep at least 100 Barbados dollars on me at all times. Now we get to the two points that make Barbados so great when it comes to money. The first is that the US dollar is accepted as payment everywhere. As long as you know the ratio, which we'll get to in a second, you can bring a ton of US physical bills over and use them anywhere you want, which is what I did. Before I came here, I read in a blog online where the writer recommended bringing more cash than you think you'd need. And they were exactly right. It was very convenient the first couple weeks in Barbados for me to be able to pay with US dollars that I already had on hand and get Barbados dollars back as change. I did bring debit and credit cards, of course, but they have annoying international fees attached to them. So per the recommendations of my bank before I left, I got a specific American Express card that comes with a no international fees perk. That is the only credit card I use here. And unfortunately, American Express, as I've been told by many small businesses that don't accept it, has a much higher transaction fee than Visa or MasterCard. So a lot of small businesses don't like that and won't accept that card, which is why carrying cash is so important. The second point that makes Barbados's money system so great is that their dollar's value is tied to the US dollar in a two to one ratio. So two Barbados dollars are worth one US dollar. So I came up with a little phrase, the price is twice. Whatever price you see in Barbados is twice the US dollar equivalent. If you see something that costs $2 Barbados, that means it's $1 in US dollars. That's the easiest possible conversion ratio you could ask for. Even people who despise doing mental math have to admit that's pretty easy. I should say that the exact ratio is around 1.98 to 1, not quite 2 to 1, but only banks and other official businesses use that ratio. All other places use a simple 2 to 1 ratio. And because the Barbados dollar is valued at half the US dollar, the prices listed can be somewhat of a shock for a new visitor to the island. Every price is a number that's twice as high as its US dollar price. I've done so many double takes while shopping for groceries or perusing menus at restaurants. I'll see something listed at $40 or $50 and I'll think, wow, that's expensive before my brain catches up and converts the number to US dollars. Lastly, my three recommendations for travelers to Barbados. Number one, bring US dollars if you're American. Bring a bunch, in fact. Number two, get a no international fee credit card if you're going to be visiting for a longer period of time, such as the one year welcome stamp remote work visa that I'm currently doing. And number three, Inform your bank of your travel intentions. I didn't want to arrive in Barbados and have my bank freeze all of my cards because they saw credit card activity in Barbados and thought I was a victim of identity theft. So there was an easy way for me to inform my bank online of my long-term travel intentions. So is there anything I forgot to mention about how money works here that you'd like explained? Ask a question in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer as best I can. Until then, see you all in the next video.